So Ben Q sent us over there EW3270U 4K HDR monitor. They wanted me to take a look at it and I decided to see how it handled in console gaming, PC gaming, as well as digital media like illustration and video editing. Full disclosure, the only thing they asked us for was to tweet out that I did this review as well as put in a little affiliate link down below in the description. Other than that, it was pretty much free reign. So let's take a look and see how well this monitor handled for the past couple weeks. Specs wise, straight out of the box, it's 31.5 inches. When I picked it up from John's house, he even referred to it as a beast monitor. This thing is pretty big and it sits about two feet from my face. So there's a little bit of an imposing feeling from this distance. Now I like that it was 31.5 inches simply because of the 4K factor involved. I've always been an advocate that 4K really doesn't work below a certain point. I felt that 4K would start feeling impressive at around about 30 inches. I can say though from using this, it still isn't quite noticeable. There were certainly moments when the textures and the character models coming through the heightened visual fidelity felt a little bit stronger than what you would expect. However, the overall experience is still kind of a wash. At this scale and distance from my eyes, the impact just isn't there. And due to it being 4K, like most bog standard 4K monitors, it will sit at about 60 Hertz refresh rate, which at least from my end with PC gaming is a bit on the low side. Yes, it's considered a standard for console and a lot of people are okay with it. But from a competitive standpoint, from a standpoint of feeling like a game is really smooth, like you're seeing everything and you're not missing any of the elements coming at you. It's really considered that 144 Hertz tends to be the beginning of a proper monitor for PC gaming. The monitor itself is built off of VA board, which is kind of middle of the line when it comes to monitor production. This allows it to hit a pretty basic 3000 to one static contrast ratio. It has an 178 degree viewing angle. It has a minimum response time of about four milliseconds. Although in looking around, I've seen that it has a maximum response time of 20 milliseconds. I've seen it claimed that the average though sits at about nine milliseconds. When looking for information and data on monitors like this, the companies tend to give you the selling points. What sounds really good? A massive number for dynamic contrast, that's great. It'll make someone really think, ooh, how many million contrast? I've never heard of that before. For instance, Ben Q specifications claim there's a VA board in this, but I've seen it said that there's an MVA board in this. Granted, among VA boards, there tends to be very little difference, but maybe it's important to note. I've gone off on a tangent. My bad. Back to it then. This is a WLED monitor that pushes 300 nits of brightness. Now, like what I've been talking about so far, that's pretty much middle of the line, but it is common. You'll see it in most cell phones and all standardized monitors that anyone really gets. It's finished with an anti-glare coating and it's actually sized for a VESA wall mount if that's the kind of thing you're into. It has back-mounted stereo speakers, which the original model they sent me also had. It wasn't really that great there, but it's much better here. Still, it's back mounted. You're hearing the echo of whatever you're playing or watching. Thankfully, they still give you an audio jack output so you can try to hook up your own system. Other than the audio output, they've also included two HDMI 2.0s as well as one display port. And then for the first time I've ever seen it, there is also a USB-C port. This monitor also comes with a quick select button. The first time I was introduced to that was in the 1080p HDR version from this same line. I actually did really like this feature. It allows you to turn on an emulated form of HDR. If you're playing on an older system or just on a game that doesn't have access to that function, it'll try and push the spectrum of colors you'll be able to see during your gameplay. As well, it can enhance movies and just about anything else it puts out. But one of the main features I fell in love with from that button is the Brightness Intelligence Plus. All monitors that I've seen from the EW line so far have had this built in. There's a mini sensor that'll actually pick up the color temperature as well as the brightness of your room and adjust your monitor accordingly to help protect your eyes. Now, as a person who spends at least 80% of his work week glued to a monitor for one reason or another, this is insanely helpful and I have been feeling the effects of it since I originally used the 1080p HDR version that also had this. You've probably seen other YouTubers or personalities around wearing gunner glasses, those big wraparounds that look completely yellow on the front. With Brightness Intelligence Plus selected, your monitor acts in a similar fashion, trying to prevent your eyes from seeing that wavelength of color that causes such damage. It also goes a little further by actually dimming the monitor 
during excessive amounts of use. And with the quick select button, these functions can be activated and deactivated at will. One of the other stats that draws my attention on a monitor, and maybe a few of you out there would be interested in this as well, is the color fidelity the monitor can actually hit, specifically for the Adobe RGB color space, which if you're unfamiliar, tries to bring your monitor a little bit closer to exactly how an image you see on your screen will print out of a high-end printer. Now the previous 1080p version they sent me had a rating of about 80% for the Adobe RGB setup which I thought was fairly good, especially for the price that monitor was set at. This 4K monitor boosted that up to 88%. With the increased pixel density comes the ability to open multiple files on a single monitor without really losing too much quality in a single image. So at least the nature of the 4K monitor really improved the digital design side of my life. The EW3270U also uses the DCI-P3 color space. That's more for digital cinema. The 1080p version from this line sat at about 93% for that and the 4K version gets a slight boost bringing it up to 95%. Now pricing wise, from what I've looked around at currently, the EW3270U stands up as a pretty affordable 4K 60Hz monitor. BenQ's been fairly good with that for these budget models. And you have to consider that the console gaming entertainment zeitgeist is moving towards 4K HDR at 60 hertz refresh rate anyway. And even on the PC side of things, if you're looking for a 4K monitor that has a greater refresh rate, currently the cost to achieve a PC of the power that could possibly hit 4K at 144 hertz is insanely expensive. If you are a true enthusiast, just know that it is out there and Good luck to you. So looking back at these past couple weeks, there are three avenues I would be looking for a monitor like this for. For PC gaming, the siren song of any monitor is still 144 hertz. And of course this falls short in that. But I can't count out the benefit of the Brightness Intelligence Plus system BenQ has installed in it. So at the very least, if you do have a 144Hz monitor you like to focus all your gameplay on, this could make for a very budget-friendly side monitor. While you're burning your eyes away staring at pretty impressive full HDR explosions in some of the latest games, you'll have a side monitor that is far easier to look at that has a much larger workspace area for all of your web browsers, all of your VoIP servers, anything you could possibly need and you can fit it all in one beautiful space. For console gaming though, everything I have stated fits the peak of current generation consoles. The PlayStation 4 Pro, the Xbox One X, these systems want you to be at 4K. They want you to have access to HDR. And with all the rumors swirling around, the next generation of gaming will be focused on 4K HDR as well. With the core and centralized refresh rate set to 60 Hertz, throw in built-in speakers and the ability to hook it up to a soundbar if you really want to, you've got yourself a pretty good deal. And then finally, digital media, graphic design, illustration, animation, video editing. This monitor hits 30 bits of color which puts it a little above a billion in possible visible colors. It has a decent static contrast ratio and an acceptable percentage for DCI-P3 as well as Adobe RGB. Now, yes, there are better monitors out there for those color spaces, but price-wise, you're going to be paying two if not three times more for just 10%. Personally, I would take those savings and put it into a fairly decent tablet or even a Cintiq. So definitely keep the EW3270U in mind when thinking of a workspace monitor. So there you have it, the BenQ EW3270U, an affordable middle of the road from BenQ for 4K HDR gaming. And it comes with very little sacrifice for quality. Not a half bad monitor at all. Hey, thanks for swinging by, checking out my review. If you liked what you saw and you're into all things gaming, tech, news, rumors, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. Try to turn notifications on. We'll see if YouTube does what it says it does. I think there's also some thumbs down there. They might do something. Either way, thanks for swinging by and I'll see you next time.